Today we're going to show you how to add a Victron Smart Shunt to an SOK battery. In the example video today we're using a 100 amp hour battery and I have two pieces of one knot gauge wire going to this battery representing the wires that go to our loads and chargers and stuff like that. It's pretty simple. Let me show you what's in the box here. There's a quick start guide but you're watching this video so you don't need that. There is the Smart Shunt device itself pretty straightforward. And then there is a couple of wires. We only need one of these for now, so we're gonna get rid of those. Aside from that, we just need a little jumper cable here. I'm matching the same gauge wire as we already have for our system. Um, worst scenario, you can always go a little bit bigger. It's no problem. Now, one thing to keep in mind at this end, I have a 5 16 diameter ring terminal and this side, I have a 3 8 diameter ring terminal. And that's important because this battery has a 5 16 screw and this smart shunt uses 3 8 diameter screws. So first things first, we're gonna need some tools. I have a 17 millimeter socket and adapter here on my handy uh, quarter inch drive ratchet that is covered in electrical tape for safety reasons. And then I have a 14 millimeter and that is also insulated. Whenever you're working with batteries, it's best to work with insulated tools. First things first, I'm going to disconnect this negative cable from the battery. As you see here, it's pretty straightforward. Just pull that out. Now, you may have to change the end on your cables. This one is a 3 8 which is actually wrong for this battery, but for the case of putting it on the smart shunt, it's in our favor. All we gotta do is add this cable here with the 5 16 ring to the battery and tighten it down. And then this other end is gonna go on the shunt. Now, take a look here. You see how we have battery minus and system minus. This cable is gonna to need to go to the port marked battery minus. So using my 17 millimeter socket, I can undo that, pull it off, and then it is pretty easy to just put this uh, terminal onto that battery minus port. Now I'm not doing this installing it like in an RV, I'm just kind of doing it on the bench here as an example, but you would want to mount this thing with some screws to some sort of board or something in your rig. And then uh, yeah, system minus. Now this is very important. You do not want anything whatsoever between the battery minus on the shunt and the negative terminal on the battery. No other wires connect on these two. Everything goes to this port here. This is like your new battery minus. Think of it that way. So that's where we're going to connect on our cables that go to the rest of our system. And like it says, it's the system minus. Make sure to tighten these all the way. I'm sure there's a torque spec in the manual you'll need to look up so that you get a proper connection. Torque is very important. And now I'm gonna use my insulated socket and tighten up the terminal on the battery. And then we just have this little wire here. Go ahead and open that up. And we're gonna take this end that has this little terminal and insert it here on the shunt where it shows VBAT plus. It just shoves on in there. It's like a, uh, a one-way type deal, so you can't pull it out. This is nice and strong. And then from there, the other end has a ring that's gonna go on the positive battery terminal. And this little black deal right here is a fuse, so you won't have to add one of your own. So here, using your insulated tool, undo the positive terminal, put the ring on first thing onto the bolt. You want this on top of the positive terminal, not underneath. If it were underneath, it would make a bad connection and we definitely don't want that. And once that's on there, make sure to tighten it down all the way to the proper torque. And now the hardware side of things is done. As you can see, I have a blinking blue light and that means we're good to go. Now comes the part where we need our cell phone because um, this connects with Bluetooth. So you're gonna wanna install and open the Victron Connect app. And in here, you can see my smart shunt. So I'm gonna click into that and it's probably gonna require you on the first time connecting to do a firmware update. But on this screen right here, first thing, it's asking for a pin. This pin is six zeros and then click pair. From there, like I said, it's got a um, firmware update. Go ahead and click update. It may go through this twice. So in that case, make sure to do all of the updates. After the firmware update, you're gonna wanna click back on your device 
and it may warn you that you have unsecured access. There will be a pop-up. Just click ignore. You should change your connection pin code. Like it says right here, there's a change pin code button. Just click not now. And now it's showing the battery at 100%, but that's not true. We gotta get this set up. So click on the settings button here at the top. And once you're in the settings menu, click on the battery tab. Now in this case, we're using a 100 amp hour battery. So we're gonna wanna touch in here and type in 100 amp hours. From here, you're gonna wanna set the charged voltage. Now for this SOK, I recommend 13.8 volts, and we will post all of these settings down in the description. From there, you're gonna have discharge floor. Now what discharge floor is, let's say you set it at 10% on the previous screen here, how it says time remaining, that is time until you hit your percentage of discharge floor. So let's say you wanna know how long till you're at 10%, that's when you would set the discharge floor at 10%. Let's say you only wanna go 50% down, then you would set it at 50% and your time remaining would say time until you're at 50%. So that's what discharge floor is. So now back in the settings under battery, I'm gonna actually set that to 10% and then click okay. Tail current for these lithium batteries, I recommend 2%. Charge detection time is perfectly fine at three minutes. Pukert exponent is currently set at 1.25. That is for lead acid batteries. For these lithium batteries, we want 1.05. And charge efficiency factor, we're gonna set at 98%. The rest of the settings are perfect except for state of charge. We wanna set that at 30% because this battery ships from the factory at 30% and that's typical of all lithium batteries. Now we only need to set that 30% one time because then once we fully charge the battery, it'll resynchronize to 100% and then we'll be set. Now if your battery's not at 30% because it's brand new, you're gonna to wanna to probably set it at 100% and then do a full charge cycle on the battery. So that's it for settings. Now when we close out, we can see the battery's at 30%. If we had any load on it, we would see the current and we can monitor the voltage here. So for the most part, that's gonna get you going. You'll be ready to go. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if there's anything I missed, please also leave that down below. If this helped you, leave a thumbs up and we hope to see you in the next video. Thanks, bye-bye.